Good evening, folks, and welcome to Mezza della Spazzatura Italiano Part 4. 1990, the Bronx Warriors. I'm your host, Chase, with my co-hosts, Blake and John. Hello. hey All right, let's... Time for dessert at mm. the old Olive Garden of movies. <laughs> In this extended <laughs> metaphor we've been using. That we've been clinging desperately to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably the most fun one, I would say. Of the I, four. I, I'll give it that. It definitely it, it wasn't as torturous as the others. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, it it kind of let me down, but I might have had too high of hopes for it. Oh, it was abs- it was nonsense, and <laughs> the way it ended was just what the fuck. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, they, they just. Like, not only did the, the creators of the movie stop trying, the actors stopped trying, everybody stopped trying. <laughs> Let's just end this yeah. the way we would end an episode of G.I. Joe. Well, <laughs> I'm excited to hear about it, because I haven't seen the last 15 to 20 minutes. Oh my god. I'm sorry, I tried to squeeze it in before we actually started recording. <laughs> Come on. even gave you an extra night. I did. You know, y'all are starting to sound like my wife now, because even she was saying, why don't you just watch it now? And I'm like, ah. (laughs) (laughs) I was even considering, like, I was going to send John a text. I wanted to send John a text and ask him for the answers, (laughs) because I figured, you know, even if I got all of them right, Chase would still probably win, and just to make it interesting. Uh But I figured he would run on me. (laughs) I, you know what like now that you're now that you're bringing it up I feel like I might have done it <laughs> <laughs> because even if I would have won like here was this is what I was going to present to you I most likely wouldn't win but if I did we could reveal to Chase after I had used the weapon that I in fact did cheat and it would get the heat <laughs> off of John getting the weapon used on him consistently because then Chase would have it out for me <laughs> It would be quite dramatic, too. But then I figured I was too lazy to send the text anyway, so... (laughs) Here we are. And we all know that's not how it works, Blake. You and I conspire against John. Did I conspire? (laughs) Well, I know. That's what I'm saying. That's why it didn't happen. Okay. All right. Okay. I'd like to point out, you know, let the record show that I did not conspire. (laughs) At some point, Blake remembered what this podcast is all about. Yeah, yeah it's way mo- it's way more fun just to screw over John. Yeah, <laughs> and there's there's extra uh, uh, blood in the water because we had to watch that goddamn Neil Breen movie this season. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you think that weapon isn't getting used on you, sir, you're. <laughs> <sighs> oh, jeez. Then again, I'm probably going to be, be way per- too confident. Yeah. I might be first one out, out the gate again. Of, Who knows? Yeah, I might bring out some talking animal movie and get shut down and be like, what the hell? <laughs> it wasn't supposed to happen like this. <laughs> it's been too brutal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it's, it's straight up going to be, uh, <laughs> we were brothers, Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> you were the chosen one. <laughs> Yeah, it's that's gonna be dramatic right there. <laughs> Speaking of uh, talking animal movies, uh, I've, I've been uh, noodling around what the what other special months we could do, and I was thinking, you know, I don't think it's gonna time out right, but you know, Christmas is coming up, and I know we've gotten some people writing in saying that we need to do more uh, 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 chestnuts roasting on a dumpster fire specials. And I found on Tubi, of all places, uh, we can do an entire month of talking dog Christmas movies. (laughs) There's enough of them. That sounds like a fucking nightmare. It does. The the main one uh, being, what if you took Home Alone, replaced Kevin McAllister with a talking dog, and replaced both Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern with Kevin Sorbo? No, thank you. 
<laughs> Does Kevin Sorbo spend the entire movie calling like atheists idiots or whatever? Uh, that's, like, cool. that's what he does these days. He's the dog catcher. <laughs> Those atheist dogs. I've I've told my Kevin Sorbo story on the podcast before, right? Possibly. I we've been doing this for eighteen years. I can't remember what all you talked about. Anyway, went to a Comic Con, drunk with a bunch of friends, and we passed by his little booth and nobody was in line to see him. So we just kind of stared awkwardly across the little ropes that were supposed to be contained in a line to see him. <laughs> and, and, and to break the silence, I said, maybe it's your haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Did he not still have the Hercules haircut? It, it was. It wasn't. It wasn't that. I mean, it was close, but it wasn't the full blown Hercules. Yeah. I mean, why would anybody want to see him if he <laughs> changed his hair? Yeah. Well, you know, maybe it's your haircut. And <laughs> <laughs> he looked very sad when I said it. Oh. <laughs> If we had read the following day that Kevin Sorbo committed suicide, Blake would not have been surprised. No. <laughs> Either way, Kurt like Cameron it. wouldn't have let him do it anyway. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> See, I done figured out all the angles. <laughs> Irregardless. Oh my gosh. We gotta get, we gotta close out this goddamn special month. So let's get to it. 19? I got, I got one, one other thing real quick. Okay. Uh, so, turns out, how did this how did this get made is going to do the Velocipaster. Okay. So, it looks like the um, Twitter harassment campaign I participated in against Paul Shear finally worked. <laughs> okay, a couple things. Who's Paul Shear? What's a Twitter campaign? Uh, and, yeah, explain that. <laughs> well, you know what? how this get made is, yeah. It's, let's let's say yes. It's a <laughs> their it's rival a bad movie podcast. Bad movie con, uh, podcast. Arguably one of the more popular ones. I'm gonna say, are we gonna say rival or are we just gonna say? <laughs> technically, they're a rival. The okay. the dominant yeah <laughs> bad no, movie technically podcast. Technically, fine. Technically, is the best kind of right anyway. So yes. well, let's stick with that. The the bad movie podcast with its jack boot on our fucking neck. Mm. Yeah. Um, Stealing our <laughs> Ninja Terminator thunder. Oh, I can't believe it. Anyway, uh, so there was like all these people um, telling Paul Shear, like, you know, watch it, you cowards. And um, Paul thought it was like, oh, Paul Shear, by the way, is, is one of the hosts of How Did This Get Made? Okay. Yes. Uh, he's like the gap toothed guy that people know from TV. Yeah. He's on um, The League. Uh... The League. Various uh, Adult Swim programs. Yeah, y'all are talking Blake French to me right now. <laughs> Blake has no idea. <laughs> anyway, uh, so he thought it was gonna, basically going to be what we thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, just trash. And everyone was like trying to convince him that, it, that it's not like that, bro. Like, watch it. So, anyway, they announced they're doing it. And I just want to congratulate Brendan Steer and everybody who made yes. The Lost Ambassador. I'm sure this is going to expose the movie to like a lot of people. Absolutely. Um and secondly, like, fuck you guys. We did it first. Mm. Um, and I can't wait to listen to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> can we slip, like, uh, the, 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 can we slip the Velocity Pastor people, like, a 20 and say, like, when it comes out for them to say, oh, yeah, it was great, but Gorbash Theater did it better? <laughs> Maybe. That could, that could do it. That could, that yeah. could finally get us in the, in the, the limelight we deserve. Yeah, all from a twenty spot, John. Yeah. Okay. It's your job. It's your job to interact with directors and celebrities, anyway. So. Sure. The, the one time you did it. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's your job to be nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's Blake's job to piss everybody off he talks to. Yeah. Now, if he acts appalled at the twenty, you send me in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the sir, way, have your that's have unethical. Your have you written that letter to the, the, the chicken cluck in or whatever the fuck it was from where rooster? Oh, the, uh, the, uh, sun dog yeah. sundries or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. The outfitter. Um, I did call, <laughs> uh, 
but I, and I recorded it, but there was nothing worth anything. Because the first person I asked if, you know, where they connected in the funding of Where Rooster and all that, they had no clue what I was talking about. <laughs> and I asked to speak to their manager, and they hung up on me. And when I called back and asked for the manager again, they just told me to quit calling. So it wasn't worth it. No. But are maybe they, I'll try are, again. Are they trying to distance themselves from <laughs> being the know. sole backers of Curse of the business? <laughs> I, I don't know. But yeah, like I actually did follow up on that one, but it wasn't worth bringing to the table, you know? Uh, got it. What are you going to do? We we try. We try to bring yeah, another I'll try tier. Again, though. I'll, I'll try one more time. <laughs> yeah. We're out here. Tr- we're trying to harass everybody, you guys. Like, yeah. People just are. The, the 90s are over. People yeah. refuse to be harassed anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's a. Uh, we, 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 we'd call up Vic Morrow and ask him about his performance in this if he still had a head. So Yeah, unfortunately, a uh, helicopter fell on him. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, you didn't know that? Did we talk about this? I don't know if we talked about it on air, but yeah, when we did no, Live I did, Shark. I brought it up because I, I was watching I was on Shudder. There's a, there was a series called Cursed Films. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, you telling yeah, me that. Okay, Twilight Zone yeah. movie, yeah. Helicopter yeah, same guy. Yeah, 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 gotcha. I remember the story. I just didn't know it was this guy. Okay. Yeah, got it. There we go. Caught up. This was his. This was his last film before that happened. This. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> There's a line where he so talks this... about a helicopter in this that uh, grimly foreshadows his fate. Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> God. And I'm sure when he got this movie, his age, he like he he's thanking his agent, like, man, I can't believe I'm getting all these movie roles, and he's always like, don't don't let your head get too big, and then <laughs> pie out. <laughs> Ugh. Twilight Zone movie. I can stop doing this Italian crap. Oh, things are turning <laughs> around. <laughs> Jesus. John Landis, a big up and comer. <laughs> Well, things are turning around for old Vic Morrow. <laughs> Everything's coming up Vic Morrow. <laughs> okay. We haven't even started and we've already gone off the dark deep end. So. <laughs> okay. 1990, The Bronx Warriors. We open to a montage of various gangland imagery. Knives, tattoos, spiked elbow pads, roller skates, uh, butterfly... <laughs> Face paint, shoe knife. <laughs> I was I was in love with this credit sequence. Like, it, <laughs> it's so good, and immediately announces like this movie's gonna have more style than any of the other ones that we've watched. Yeah. So I was I was very excited. It wasn't bad. So a woman runs across a bridge frantically before we cut to a couple of suits talking about how she has gotten away. No thanks to that no account security. We need to get hammer on the case right now. Uh, title card comes up. The year is 1990. The Bronx is officially declared no man's land. The authorities give up all attempts to restore law and order. From there on, the area is ruled by the riders. So, yeah, it's escape from New York. Yeah. This is, this is the future liberals want. <laughs> So the woman continues to run Not down political. the tunnel. It's a, it's a meme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the woman continues to run down a tunnel when she's jumped by some real tough looking hombres. Uh, roller skates, hockey sticks, white helmets, padded space vests. Uh, <laughs> that is until the riders show up. Uh, another gang of bad dudes on motorcycles sporting glowing skulls. They all roll up and square up against the hockey idiots. Uh, a very unimpressive melee breaks out where dudes block and parry with the utmost choreography. It, it's all that, you know, that stick fighting when you're a kid, just left, right, left, right, left, yeah. right. But who, would th- who, who chose roller skates? And this has been in a couple other movies. We may not have watched the movies, but I know movies in this from this era. It, it was like, you know, post-apocalyptic roller skates. Why? Yeah, they were in the war. There was a gang with them in the Warriors, wasn't there? Wasn't there? I think so. Was there? Yeah. I mean, I Even guess so, like 
I guess technically, like, rollerblades <clears throat> weren't a thing. I mean, they might have been cooler, but... Yeah, but if you go into a yet. fight, you don't want to be wearing roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Absolutely not. Like, if there's a checklist of things you don't want on you when you're about to get in a fight, roller skates is definitely there. Footing comes into play in a fight. So. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> You don't want you know, to punch 99. a guy. 99.9% of the time, yes. You don't want to punch a guy and the punch just propels you backwards five feet. It, yeah. <laughs> Not only that, just like it, the the tiniest bit of gravel that's out of place <laughs> and your knees are skinned up. Well, these guys are all, they're padded. They're well, all set. Yeah. Plenty of pads idiots. on these guys. <laughs> and where are they getting the coordinated outfits? Yeah, this is this was my thing. Just yeah. like in these weird post apocalypses, uh, I understand wearing like whatever you can find, whatever's laying around. But like, right. they you got see, just, they got a seamstress back here, yeah. like making these <laughs> making no, these no, padded that's, uniforms. That's just up. it. You you base your gang around whatever mass produced clothing item you find. You think those tap dancing jackasses wanted to be that? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's, they just found the tap dancing outfits they and they're like, found, oh, fuck. They found three dozen tap dancing outfits and said, well, I, I guess we're the, the, the jazz tappers, I guess that's what the fuck we are now. <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah, I just never understood the whole gang movies where everybody's like totally coordinated and everything. That's what we found. But like, you know, even the Crips and Bloods, yeah, they're color coordinated, but they got their own individuality. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, you know, it's it's silly, but it's also kind of cool. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's not a, it's not a uniform. It's just a color scheme. Like, yeah. right? It, you know, I don't know. It bothered me a lot. <laughs> so, uh, uh, they best all the hockey guys when two of them break off and flee. Uh, one of the riders jumps on his bike and extends a pair of blades out the sides and takes off after the pair. And instead of just, you know, separating a couple feet, they stay right next to each other as he roars between them and knocks them down. A little disappointed they didn't get their legs lopped off. Yeah, yeah. I expected more stuff like this, like this blade gag, but... Yeah, it, hmm, disappointing. They just kind of trip. Uh, but he doubles back and drives between them again as they're sitting up and slices their faces open. Yeah. Which is kind of oh, cool. That was all right. Yeah, better than nothing. Uh, the battle rages on, and uh, if you're going to do slow motion, don't pick the scene where your lead whiffs his strike so bad you can see all eight inches of air between <laughs> his weapon and the guy's head. <laughs> So the woman watches on, and she seems to be getting all hot and bothered by this. She's making faces and licking her lips like she's loving this. Uh, the leader of the rider <laughs> moves in. Over me. He, he, finishes, <laughs> <laughs> he finishes off the last of the hockey men, and he spots the woman. He walks over. He asks her uh, where she's coming from, and she says that she's coming from Manhattan. Oh, you want me to take you back there? And she tells him that she came here purposefully. <laughs> Because anywhere is better than Manhattan. Ain't nothing worse than this hellhole here, lady. And that's how he's going to talk through the whole fucking movie, isn't it? <laughs> also, his his uh, posture was disturbing. Yeah. Yes. It was like... The most <laughs> the most vertical human I've ever seen. Like, even on his motorbike, he was right perfectly up the straight. Ass. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it was gross. <laughs> Might not have been human. Might be another new brain. Oh, I don't have my X Files sound. Damn it! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta always have the X Files sound. So uh, he offers her a hand and helps her to her feet. Uh, cut to a uh, mustache suit. suit. Uh, they give these guys names, but I can't remember because they've got names like Frank and Joe, and I can't fucking. I don't care. Um, yeah, he's in a One of these guys is uh, is Shadow from Warriors of the Wasteland. Mm -hmm. Oh, is he? I didn't even. I didn't catch that. Yeah. Uh, he's in a helicopter talking to his partner on the radio, telling him that he's proceeding with the plan and that they are going to keep it top secret. Uh, cut to the next day where <laughs> a lone drummer is sitting down under the bridge and he's just rat a tat away. Yeah. <laughs> it was Phonics Monkey from South Park. <laughs> 
and there's in in the foreground there's some poor bastard impaled on a, on a steel pike and the riders all come rolling up and they all park and just stare at him as he's just <laughs> he just keeps going i was and, confused by the time passage here because if it's just the next morning, she's already outfitted with like yeah, oh yeah, le- she's part of like the gang a leather now. a leather jacket. She's got her own motorbike. She knows how to ride it. <laughs> yeah, I was confused. Like this had to have been a time jump because yeah, but it was fully integrated into the gang now. But we we get all these snapshots of the various uh, rider members. Some are old men. Some are women. Some have two arms. Some only have one. Multiple are Nazis. Yeah, yeah I was like, yo. These are the <laughs> yeah. protagonists? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> these are the good guys, everybody. They're all <laughs> rocking swastikas. That tells me that they just got bikers to fill these roles. Yeah. And oh, they said, 100%. I'm, I'm wearing my shit, motherfucker, yeah. if you want me in this movie. Yeah. Do you do you know how to ride a motorcycle? You goddamn right I do. Okay, you're in the movie. Mm, and, one of them didn't. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was part of the plan at all. <laughs> so, uh, the, the leader, uh, Trash, Strolls over and takes a long look at the impaled guy on the riverbank. And just then a new gang arrives and they're all driving these old Model T's and sporting fancy suits. Uh, one of them that's, got the, a, that's the gang I'd want to join up yeah. with. One of them I'm pretty sure is driving the Eliminator. <laughs> it's pretty much the same damn car. Uh, and the drummer just keeps on going. And I guess he's just there to provide ambiance for gang standoffs. He's not affiliated with anybody. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love this drum guy. Like, he, there's no explanation for him. He's just like a surreal element to the scene. I think they arrived to shoot the scene there, and he was already there, and they couldn't convince him to leave. <laughs> so, also, buddy, you know, you're fucking got, up all our audio. <laughs> he's got the the no man's land pretty much figured out. Like, as long as I stay here at this common area playing drums, nobody's gonna kill me. Like, because it's just like, oh, it's a drum guy. What are you gonna do? Yeah. So I think he's got it figured out more than most. <laughs> he's a one man gang. Yeah. Uh, so Trash uh, has a parlay with old uh, clown face Magoo, the spokesman for the uh, this other gang, which become the final they're called the Tigers. Uh, Trash <laughs> asks like, where Ogre is. Why is this rockabilly guy like so sleepy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He, he the. The actor didn't open his mouth to speak any of his lines, so the person dubbing him decided to do that as well. Because I could barely understand what the fuck he was saying. <laughs> yeah, no, none of it made sense. Uh, I think he so ate he, somebody's he, heart. <laughs> yeah, he mumbled something unintelligible about delivering the dead guy, and someone ate his heart. And it, that that's all I got out of it. I was so, trying to draw parallels to, like, the mouth of Sauron on Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> but like it, it, it didn't work because you know <laughs> the mouth of, of Sauron, Sauron came out and it was just some drowsy guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you know I, 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 I'm pretty sure we got your hobbit friend in there I, I, it just it just goes to show you how awesome those movies were <laughs> is this is this his shirt I think this is his shirt yeah we got him yeah, yeah. hey yeah. how you doing Aragorn <laughs> I mean, if y'all are here to fight, I guess we can fight. We'll do it. Now. They're all they're yeah. all waiting right back there. <laughs> okay, never forget that that actually would be awesome. It would be an improvement <laughs> to Lord of I the would, Rings. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, you, you realize that violently like, chopped off. I don't, <laughs> that knife just went in pretty damn deep. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> That'd be as if I told told Chase, you know, Jaws would've been better if it was a dolphin. <laughs> Come on, it's not even a scene from the theatrical. Like, <sighs> don't get me started because this whole thing will be Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> the extended edition is the right one. Let's just we'll get that out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Agreed, agreed. All right, moving on. So, uh, Trash walks past them, back to the cars. 
uh, and opens the door of one of them, and a, a woman steps out, and we, then we see the man himself, Fred Williamson. Uh, he tells trash. No baseline. That, no, but I don't. I couldn't find it. No, no, no. There was no baseline in the movie when he oh, showed yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I wanted to go dig out that baseline from when we watched Warriors of the Wasteland, but I couldn't find it. So. I was fully expecting as soon as the door opened for the baseline to kick in, and when it didn't, I was yeah. very disappointed. Disappointing. That's to me. That's a metaphor for the entire movie. Like, I, I, Warriors of the Wasteland hit. Like this. Yeah. This movie didn't hit. Like the way I I had hoped. But <laughs> anyway, this this movie just flopped on the deck like Scorpion's ass. <laughs> <laughs> the tagline for this thing was, could ah shut up like shut up I'm kidding <laughs> go ahead without me <laughs> it's <Move> ruined it <laughs> now <laughs> so uh ogre fred williamson tells trash that leech is a blood freak and if he had it his way he turned all the bronx into a cemetery and i don't know who leech is but uh, I guess the sleepy guy back there. Yeah, I uh, think he's Leech. I think he ate the he, heart because he's the heart a blood of, freak. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Trash asks Ogre uh, why he killed old what's his face, and Ogre tells him that the writers broke the deal. They were to stay in their own territory. Besides, old what's his face was carrying a gizmo. He had to be. <laughs> Which killed. made me laugh. <laughs> he had to be. Killed. What if what if that thing would have eaten after midnight? <laughs> well, that's what I was. Th- I thought this dude was smuggling mogwais into the Bronx. <laughs> he had a gizmo. Uh, Trash calls bullshit, to which Ogre produces said gizmo, <laughs> and he claims that it, the the devices was set to the same wavelength as the Manhattan Police or something. So, <laughs> they, they how could you determine that? I don't. You you can't even call it anything besides a gizmo, and you're gonna yeah. figure out the wavelengths that it's set to. <laughs> <laughs> so ogre's crew drive off and trash takes the gizmo to ice his second in command who says that uh what's his face chris is his name almost fucked everything up for everybody and they're wondering was he really a spy and they all ride off including the girl uh uh from the beginning Anne is her name and this is where i notice oh she's just she's fully decked out in biker gear she's part of the crew now uh, How come Chris didn't get a didn't get a name? Like he's just Chris. He's Chris. <laughs> Everybody else is like trash and ice and. Well, how come they didn't give Anne a name? They gave she Anne just, everything she else. There. She just got there. Because yeah, yeah, yeah but mean... she's got a bike. <laughs> I don't know. I think it'd be easier to come up with a nickname than a whole fucking motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> Well, I, this is something that I don't understand about the movie. So, like, this this came out in um, 82 or 3 or something. Mm-hmm. Um, they're postulating that in eight years from then, all of the Bronx would become overrun by gangs, and yeah. they would all choose to change their names to silly names? Yes. Like, even the old guys? Like, the That's 62-year-old old Stan Bloomis all of a sudden chose to become a hot dog? <laughs> Why not? Everybody else is picking names. I'm picking names. It's I not like, like hot they dogs. like grew up in this and like their names were trash all along or whatever. He was like <laughs> some kid and he decided trash. I'm trash now. Yeah, have yep. a little more self worth. <laughs> going, going, going by you know the age of some of the characters at least. Yeah, they were children. So yeah, they they picked a stupid name. <laughs> I mean, have, haven't you ever seen half the names that are on uh, Xbox Live? How many of them want those names now? Damn. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> hmm. You picked it. You stuck with it. That's what it is. You can never change it. You want to lose all yeah. your trophies? But it would have to be... <laughs> it'd have to be the, like your, your name that you used when you were like 11, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Smoke a lot of potum is 420. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. It is. <laughs> it's because I knew a smoke a lot of bottom is for twenty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All the ones oh. I know are like you know, it's like dank sniper 007. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. 
Uh, back at HQ, one of the suits sees that the reading from the gizmo is cut off, so they've lost their informant, Chris. Uh, and a, uh, <laughs> a couple of Imperial officers fresh from the Death Star are flying over the Bronx, <laughs> talking about how they should just napalm the whole city. Uh, these, these costumes come back. In an, in, I, not on the person I was expecting to wear them either. Uh, down on the ground, the writers discuss what happened with Chris and the gizmo. And Ice thinks that it, it was a setup, but uh, Rat or Blade, who knows, uh, thinks Ogre and the Tigers uh, did them a favor, uh, cluing them into Chris's little gizmo. And Ice thinks that it's time that they got even with Ogre. But Anna says that she knows uh, that she was one, the one that Chris was spying on. So I'm confused. It's even more evidence that a ton of time has passed because she knows this Chris character and she mm -hmm. has a feeling she's been spying on him. It hasn't been for a couple of hours. Or maybe it has been. <laughs> I don't know. So later, the two suits ride through Manhattan and discuss why the most wealthy girl in the world would run away to the Bronx. And Sam and Fred, whatever their names are, make uh, the call back to HQ and they question whether Hammer's going to get the job done, to which they assure he will. Back in the Bronx, a patrol van enters, and they're searching for Anne. It's just two cops. Uh, we cut back to the writer's hideout slash Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Trash is sitting with Anne, and uh, he's questioning her whether or not she actually wants to be there. And she tells Trash that she actually feels like she belongs here and I feel safe with you and uh, I, I want you to never let anybody take me. Again, how much time has passed? I just love the line, I feel safe with you, Trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with a name like Trash. Oh my God. So... The riders spot the cop van, and Trash and the gang lead them on a little chase and lose them. They flank behind them and surround the van as one of the gang hops on it, climbs to the roof, and hangs over the front, and he spray paints a naughty word on the windshield as they drive by. <laughs> he might as well have just, like, spray painted butt on the windshield. <laughs> just... I mean, why spray paint anything? <laughs> or yeah, just, like... Endgame. Or, like, cover up the windshield with spray paint so they can't right. see. Do something functional. Don't just write shit on the yeah, windshield. What's, what's the end game, though? Because we never see how he got off of there. Nope. He's still on there to this day. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just the end of the situation. Like, exactly. Nothing, nothing else happens. The guy wrote duty head on our goddamn windshield. <laughs> Retreat! <laughs> and they were ready to kill these guys. Like, they were cocking their weapons and everything oh yeah they were gonna run them down in the street if they hadn't dro drove it off on the motorcycle yeah. so yeah so we're supposed to believe that they just stopped and then he got off the roof and ran away laughing at him or something like yeah. <laughs> they just shaking their fists out the window and that's yeah. the they end went back, they went back to manhattan to lick their wounds <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got us chief uh yeah no <laughs> shit right there on the windshield <laughs> the chief's like god damn it <laughs> He must have been a professional, too, because he wrote it backwards. That way it looked right for us. <laughs> and upside down. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just some sort of warlock. <laughs> <laughs> but meanwhile, uh, old Vic Morrow arrives on the scene. Hammer. Uh, he's dressed like a mailman, carrying a package into a building. No, he's so dressed like Bernie. <laughs> you kind of... <laughs> Dead Bernie. Specifically yeah, dead, dead Bernie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he enters the building as some homeless guy taking a piss at some, hey, mailman, you got the package for my little friend here? He's expecting a love letter. Blah. <laughs> Ew, what? Is he asking him where, like, where's his flashlight? <laughs> like, I just also, whenever this part really made me think, like, was there any decade where that was considered comedy? <laughs> like, did uh, somebody, like, whenever they brought that up in the writer's room, were they just howling at the table? Or, like, <laughs> who thought that's funny? I don't know. Everybody knows if you want a homeless man to truly be hilarious, he has to put a, a paper bag on his head and walk through a plate glass window. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take note. Yeah, with that like I can the only with. way. With like frozen yeah. chickens and shit stuffed down his pants. Right. I, I don't know why, like, the, the dialogue, actually a lot of this movie, and I mentioned this to Chase, just reminded me of 80s and 90s anime. Um, like, the dubs of 80s and 90s anime yeah. were like the... <laughs> The dialogue was garbage, and they would like curse for no reason. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's there's one line we're gonna get to it because I wrote it down that just <laughs> it floored me when he said it. <laughs> so <laughs> I might I wrote one down too. It might be the same. We're, we're gonna we're gonna find out if it's the same one when we get to. It. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and the, I mean, who, who knows? Maybe it was the same uh, dubbing company. <laughs> that they got to do this that did Maybe. Off, off the old anime. So Vic spots the rider's hideout and slowly makes his way in. Uh, he sneaks up and there's a rider and his woman make it out in the stairwell. And he tries to sneak past, but he gets caught. And the rider pulls out a knife when Vic slips a finger into a hole in the package and spins around and blasts him with the hidden shotgun in the big tube package. Uh, he, he then just murders the woman for the sheer thrill of it. <laughs> so this is like this is you actually kind of genius. Just one. Yeah. Like this is kind of genius because even Terminator Two ripped this off. Mm -hmm. Like the shotgun <laughs> hidden in a, a delivery package, basically. Like, yeah. So kudos to them. Good job. Even though who's a mailman walking around the the no man's land? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they yeah, have it's functioning like super mail conspicuous. His, yeah. his like disguise didn't work once. I mean, like maybe on that homeless guy, but <laughs> yeah. as soon as he went in there, the this guy making out on the stairs is like, hold on. Yeah. You're disguised well, as a mercenary dressed as a mailman. <laughs> even even my easily distracted ass was sitting there saying, Well, do, would the mail still go to the Bronx? I mean, <laughs> surely people still need to get letters. That guy's waiting on a love letter. Maybe they do have a post office there. <laughs> <laughs> if the guy in the stairwell would have said hey wait a second there's no mail on Sunday <laughs> <laughs> well uh, Hammer blows away the woman just cause she's sitting there uh, then he takes out a, a, a ring and he drops it on the corpses when the riders all swarm in and Hammer blasts a few shots at them uh, to make his escape and tosses a grenade uh, that seems to do nothing. What was it? Like a, a gender reveal thing? <laughs> <laughs> we all know that does way more than what just happened Way more here. damage. <laughs> it set all of California on fire, but... Uh, uh, see, I can be current. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so... Uh, yeah, he, there's a hole in a wall, and Blade, one of them, is hiding in the room, and he pulls the pin out of something, and he dumps it in, and it's inches away from Blade and blows up, but in the next scene, he's running around like nothing happened. Yeah, like it didn't do anything to him. <laughs> he just has dust in his mustache. Yeah. <laughs> Goddamn dust body bomb. Uh, and it blew up right next to him, so... yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems like it would have been more effective to just sneak past and not drop this yeah. thing, whatever or, it was. Or maybe not have emptied your shotgun into the wall <laughs> right before. I, I mean, he took one shot at him and he ducked behind uh, uh, the wall. And instead of, you know, stopping and waiting to see if he popped out again, he just unloaded every shell into the wall and then he's got nothing now. Yeah. He's a slip shot uh, mercenary. Mm -hmm. Um he jumps out a window and gets away. The no, riders all run that out. That dude jumped out of a six-story window. <laughs> it, landed it, it on his a, feet like it was nothing. It was an impressive height that that stunt man jumped out that window. Uh, the riders all get on their bikes and drive off while the homeless guy's yelling at them to keep the noise down. Uh, they spot Hammer riding away. He, he jumps on the semi-truck and they go after it. But he gives him the slip under a bridge and he jumps off unseen. So they run down the semi truck who really didn't need to stop for a motorcycle. I mean, it's a semi. Yeah. Once again, Terminator 2. Yeah, they get in front of him and he just he has to slam on his brakes. 
they approach the driver and Ice gets kicked in the face when he opens the door and it turns out it's old hot dog, the neighborhood roused about. <laughs> <laughs> and tra- trash demands that he's, he's got a club foot for reasons that don't matter. Um, because he had to kick Ice in the face with his big, thick shoe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Trash demands to search his truck. So Hot Dog gets out. And he, t- he tells the gang, search the truck. And instead of searching the truck, they all get on their bikes and just leave. Well, no, they're going to search the area. Oh, the area. He's searching the trash. I thought he said, the truck. Okay, I thought he said search the truck and they all just left. <laughs> so... Trash is left alone with Hot Dog. Trash goes through the truck, but he doesn't find anything. Uh, he asks him if he sold a gizmo to Chris, but, you know, Hot Dog don't know what no gizmo is. You, I'll knock your block off if you talk to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> so they leave I, I, old Hot I'm, Dog. It would have been so much better if, like, you sold him that gizmo. You mean the black one that looks like a watch? Yeah, I don't even know what a gizmo is. <laughs> <laughs> So they leave Hot Dog with his truck and they head back to the hideout. Uh, they get there and Ann found the ring that Hammer dropped on the corpses and he gives it to Trash and Trash recognizes it, but no time for that now. It's time for a, a funeral with way more epic music than this movie deserves or needs. <laughs> it's pretty good. It was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but out of place. See? Uh, <laughs> They for these place... unnamed unnamed characters. Yeah, yeah no. They, yeah. They place the two death riders on a pile of garbage and just set them on fire, as is the custom. And, <laughs> and there's this huge chanting, like, summer blockbuster movie, like, fucking music score going. Uh, Can you guys um, imagine the eulogies that they had, like... <laughs> Today we celebrate the lives of our friends, Chode and Anus. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, Anne blames herself, because if she hadn't come to the Bronx, they might still be alive. She's Uh, probably right. Probably. Uh, One of the writers, uh, Rat, Itch, Puke, whichever one, uh, (laughs) scoops up some ashes to save uh, for later, and they ride out to the river, overlooking Manhattan. Also, I don't think I don't think putting bodies on a plastic fire is going to reduce them to ash. <laughs> no, probably not. How can we make this smell worse? Yeah. <laughs> we throw some hair on it. <laughs> Styrofoam cubes. Let's kill everybody while we're standing around this thing. <laughs> so, they ride out to the river overlooking Manhattan and they spread the ashes by flinging them in each other's faces. Yeah. <laughs> it's every one about of them, the Big Lebowski. <laughs> everyone takes a fistful of ashes and hucks it as hard as they can, but it goes straight sideways into the person next to them. Yeah. <laughs> Just the no one's heard the effect. term pissing in the wind around there. <laughs> <laughs> so, back with the suits. They call up Hammer and give him an earful for his unorthodox procedures. And we didn't invest a million dollars in you just to walk around in a uniform. So they what? paid this man a million dollars to kill two nameless idiots. Uh, they consider him sending in a special squad of big ass motherfuckers would be better than sending an old Hammer. But since Hammer's from the Bronx and he's got a, he's got an axe to grind, so he may not be the best choice. But they decide to let him handle it as long as he brings the girl back alive. Uh, cut to Anne about to get jumped by the hockey dudes again. Uh, Trash shows the ring. It's the ring of the Tigers. So it's, it was all a big setup. Uh, this sends Ice into a so rage. Wait, in this in this in this film, Hammer is Yojimbo. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Shit. Damn, you beat me to it. Because <laughs> I was going to bring it up in the next setup. Uh, uh, but damn every, it. Everything's you, Jimbo. If you've learned anything <laughs> from doing this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Trash shows the gang the ring. This sends Ice into a rage, and he calls for war with the Tigers. But Trash is still doubting that it's the Tigers behind it, which sends the gang into even more of an uproar. <laughs> 
And here's the line. Trash looks at Ice and he says, it could be a pile of shit out of somebody's asshole. <laughs> Where else the piles of shit come from? <laughs> uh, oh man, I, that's not the one I wrote down, but that is fantastic. That's a fantastic one. Uh, so <laughs> Trash paints a vivid picture with his analogies. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trash says <laughs> that uh, Anne uh, Anne knows, but where where is she? And uh, Smell, I guess is his name, tells him that she wanted to think <laughs> and she left on her own. So Trash takes off on his own to find Anne and he goes down the tunnel that she went down and the hockey dudes come out and they barricade the tunnel behind him. So this is a shitty job done by the, I don't know who's in charge of this, cinematographer, <laughs> I don't know. But like, it ends with them just putting a shitty piece of plywood up. Yeah. And there's plenty of room all around it. So, and then the scene ends. So you think like that's the barricade, no. but when they come back later on, it's like a full. They fully blocked the yeah. tunnel. That was just but, the start. But they didn't, you know, allude to that. <laughs> I just thought that they put up a shitty piece of plywood, and people would be like, "Well, maybe he didn't come down this way." Like I, I didn't yeah. know what they were trying to do. No, they could have so, just painted a tunnel on a on a tarp <laughs> like the fucking coyote. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would have worked. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Hammer meets up with Hot Dog at the docks, and Hammer tells him that he's looking for a girl, and that she's going to be the next president of the Manhattan Corporation. Oh and my he's gotta god! Find her. He's got to find her and get her across the river. And Hot Dog, you're going to help me. Are you uh, a bad enough dude? <laughs> <laughs> so. Hammer tells Hot Dog to arrange a meeting with Ice because he knows that Ice wants to be the leader of the Riders and he's going to use that. Uh, Trash finds Anne and wants to know why she left and she says that it's her fault that for sure that all these people are dying and Trash explains to her that death walks and rides and sleeps with them, that life means nothing and that they were born dead. Yeah. Uh, Goosebumps. God yeah. damn. And then she says that it's like I'm misfits gonna... lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she says that she's gonna soon turn eighteen. Eighteen. This woman's oh, damn near thirty-five. Part. Uh, I well, didn't no. catch that part. The so, lady like, trash yeah. is a fucking rapist then. <laughs> well, he's only seventeen. Oh, he's well. the actor. It's only 17. I guess nobody knows what the age of consent is in no man's land anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> Ask the mailman. He knows. Yeah. Uh, so uh, she says that when on her birthday, she'll inherit the Manhattan Corporation, which controls 60% of the world's arms production. And I'd just be a puppet on a string to those unscrupulous men. But without her, they're powerless. That doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> this is where the movie fell apart for me. Because, like, if she doesn't want to be president, I don't think they would care in the no. real world. Like, good, now we don't have to deal with this no good, Nick. We can do what we want. Exactly. What? I I don't, yeah, I don't know. She's got some kind of, uh, you know, self-destruct mechanism on the building. <laughs> she decides not to be president. It all comes down. <laughs> so... He tells her to stay because uh, dying for her would uh, would give his life meaning. So they ride back together and they hit the barricade set up by the hockey goons. Uh, they drop a net on trash and run off with Anne. <laughs> he just, they just hit him with the net and he goes straight down. Straight yeah. down. That net weighs a ton. <laughs> it's a goddamn cartoon. <laughs> yeah, this is we're starting to get in sprinkles of cartoon. In here yeah. before it goes, you know, off the wall with it. Uh, later, Trash regroups with the riders and he tells them that the zombies took Anne. Why? Why would you name yourself the zombies if you're hockey themed? This was this was such a big problem for me. And then later, when another gang shows up that should definitely have been the zombies, <laughs> exactly. I was like, what the fuck is going on in this movie? <laughs> We took the name. Sorry, got it. Come on, be one group of zombies. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't. You, you're wearing roller Shit. skates. You couldn't think of some kind of name that had to do with like motion or wheels or. Yeah. 
Come on, man. We're the ones that found the surplus stock of Spirit Halloween. Yeah. Can we have zombies, please? You would think so. <laughs> nope. It's ours. Oh, my God. Take, took it. Uh, so. They got to go to arbitration and figure this name shit out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, zombies took Anne. He says that they need to meet with Ogre and make an alliance. And uh, Funk tells him that. Uh, that means they would have to go through the territories of the jackals and the scavengers and the sharks. Trash says that he'll need some volunteers to go with him and Blade's in and so is Super Mario. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at the zombies hideout, the abandoned roller rink, uh, Anne warns him that Trash will kill them all for taking her. And Trash, and Blade... Can I say something that pissed me off about them? Okay. Everybody's Jeez. wearing roller skates, mm-hmm. except for like four of them that are practicing martial arts somewhere. It, why have the roller skates? <laughs> <laughs> the roller skates completely disable any martial arts you may have learned. Then why are you training in martial arts? <laughs> you got to pick one, guys. You got to pick one. Roller yeah, skates are martial arts. The martial arts have... is the like it's the least popular option. Yeah, look guys, I know everybody wants the roller skates. We only have 12 pairs. So, I don't know. Your your everyday life is now gang warfare. But you got people playing hockey and people actually trained in a fight. Yeah. And there's only four of them trained in how to fight. I'm starting to think Pete. the zombies are like the shitty gang of the group. <laughs> Pete, Doug, I'm sorry. We're out of roller blades. We, we've got a couple pairs of nunchucks. That's what what you're going to have. That's going to have to be your stick. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Trash, Blade, and Super Mario, I don't know what his gang name is, Fart, probably, all arrive at the base of the Jazz Dancers. Here they come, sweet Mm. Jesus. Uh, (laughs) they all come sashaying out from behind the poles. Oh my god. They've got the little fucking top hats. And they're painted like mimes with the sparkly vests. And they're doing their little tap numbers with their little wands. And they thoroughly beat the shit out of the riders. (laughs) The riders didn't stand a fucking chance. So again, it leads to my theory. You don't pick what gang you're going to be. So these were the baddest motherfuckers on the block. They just happened to find the stupidest costumes. Yeah. They're like garbage, like droogs from the Clockwork Orange. Yeah, right. Uh, if they like weren't violent rapists, <laughs> oh, maybe well, maybe seven years of jazz tap get you prepared for the apocalypse. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. So uh, the leader comes twirling out, and she corners trash, and she tells him, "You know, you're tra- you're t- you're trespassing trash." I said, "You're trespassing trash." I don't know why she says it twice. Uh, she lets them pass on harm because she's got a soft spot for trash and always has. Uh, meanwhile, Ice spots Hot Dog in his truck and says that he's got a score to settle with him. So he leaves the gang and heads out on his own. Uh, but Scum doesn't trust him and <laughs> follows him. Uh, Ice opens the door to Hot Dog's truck to find Hammer pointing a gun at him. Meanwhile, Trash and the crew sneak further into the tunnels and they enter scavenger territory. Uh, the scavengers all show up and these are just the guys dressed in, you know, rags and, and white face paint with the black eye. They're, the, they're zombies. They're zombies. Yeah. Yeah. Th- uh, they should have been the zombies by all rights. They should be They can't the speak. They just moan. It's all there. Uh, so the scavengers jump Super Mario and plunge a bunch of two by fours into his back. I don't know. Uh, they attack <laughs> Trash and Muck, but they manage to fight them off. Ice, meanwhile, back with uh, Hot Dog and Ice and Hammer. Ice tells Hammer that Anne was caught by the zombies and that Trash is heading to Ogre to get help. So Hammer tells Ice to get him Anne by tonight and we can take care of this Trash problem for you. Hammer asks Ice for something that belongs to Trash and Ice gives him Trash's pipe sword off of his bike. Uh... <laughs> they, they, as they're having their little meeting they look over and they spot Dump uh, watching them from the alleyway <laughs> <laughs> and so this is where Ice says oh don't worry about him I'll take care of him 
So <laughs> Dump gets on his bike and rides away, and Ice follows behind him. And <laughs> the highlight of the fucking movie, uh, Ice hops the curb onto the sidewalk and fucking eats it hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, he might have died. <laughs> the, uh, the, the biker term for it is wipe the fuck out. Jesus Christ. <laughs> He the paint eats just a pile of shit out, out of someone's him. asshole. <laughs> <laughs> like it wasn't planned though, because he had that he had that speed wobble going for a second, yeah. and it really got away from him. Yeah, it flew out from under him. He slams into the ground and just lays there. <laughs> and so it's clear something was supposed to happen here where Ice follows this guy into the alleyway, but that happened and they chose to stick with that as the reason why Ice couldn't catch him. He fell off his bike like a jackass. (laughs) 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 So, I must have rewound this thing ten times watching this, because it was hilarious. Uh, So, uh, old dump runs into the, the 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 bowels of the city to find trash but he's jumped by the scavengers uh hammer is following trash through the tunnels so th- this is where I was like okay when did hammer cut off ice and get further into the tunnels than him this was supposed to be ice i think <laughs> or something yeah probably <laughs> like listen Vic, we're going to need you on for an extra day uh <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was hoping, like, oh my god, it, it wouldn't it be great if Ice just never showed up again for the rest of the movie, completely unexplained. <laughs> uh, didn't happen though. No. Uh, they spot a few of the tigers in their cars, uh, including Pimp Daddy John Candy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ogre drives up. Uh, he, he's uh, Ogre's in the in the headquarters and he's divvying up supplies to the various area of the Bronx because he's a generous king of the Bronx. Uh, trash and goop slip into the Tiger's base and Hammer's following close behind him. Uh, one of Ogre's men gets the drop on Trash, but Hammer throws Trash's uh, pipe sword through the man's back. The man fires his gun in the air as he dies and Ogre hears it and sounds the alarm. So Hammer corners Trash and tells him that Ogre's going to accuse Trash of killing one of his men. It's going to start an all-out war. Uh, He slips out just as Ogre's men arrive and trap Trash. Uh, Hammer radios Hot Dog and tells him that he's on his way back. And the scavengers all sneak up on Hammer. But he spins around and shoots them all dead while he screams like a maniac for some reason. (laughs) 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 Like he was legitimately terrified. (laughs) Nobody told him what was going to happen. <laughs> that was a real gun. <laughs> he just spun around Vic and shot Morrow is a murderer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ogre questions Trash and finds out that uh, Hammer's after Anne. And Trash tells him that he's trying to turn the gangs against each other and explains why the zombies kidnapped Anne. Cut I to love zombie. how like, Hammer's plan never works. <laughs> he tries like two times to get, to get all the gangs to fight and it never works. Nope. He's not he's not as charismatic as what's his face, I guess. <laughs> no. Big Mara's no Toshiro Mifune. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear that name without like immediately going to, to like what it shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that dirty three way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Cut to zombie headquarters where Ice is there talking with the leader Gollum. Uh, Golem, excuse me. I mean, the <laughs> ruffle Blake's feathers here. Thank uh, you. Uh, and this is, this is what I was like. Another missed opportunity. If Ice would have had a, a, a comically large bandage on his head, <laughs> 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 would have made the movie for me. Uh. Uh, so he's there trying to make an alliance with... Uh, uh, Golem. Uh, back with Trash, he convinces Ogre to help him to get Anne back and to settle the score with Hammer. Hammer tells Hot Dog to keep an eye on Ice and make sure that he follows through with his deal that he made. So, Trash, Ogre, and Witch, which is Ogre's uh, right-hand woman there, head through the tunnels by, by the, just them three. Ogre has a fucking army. 
Yeah, I don't know why he chooses to go <laughs> himself. Yeah, just the three of them are going to go. Uh, the scavengers are following close behind them. Uh, they find a uh, burp all tied up in the tunnels <laughs> and he's still alive and he warns trash that uh, ice and hot dog are working with hammer and like they shared this moment where I'm like these two are banging for sure <laughs> yes yeah. they're, like, tear. they're tearing up and they're holding each other's heads and then trash snaps his neck out of mercy <laughs> <laughs> that's true, true love right there <laughs> So the scavengers attack, and Ogre fights back, and he easily takes them takes them out. Uh, Trash gets jumped until Ogre comes to the rescue and lops one of the scavengers' heads off with his sword. I, fi- I finally like lit up right there because yeah. it was getting pretty boring <laughs> by this happened. point. <laughs> yeah, I can't do any more of this just left right left right fighting. Uh, Hot dog sneaks up and sees that Ice is uh, made the uh, is making the deal with uh, Golem to deliver an- and to hammer hammer's getting chewed out by the suits again that he hasn't gotten an yet and hot dog calls him and tells him that ice made the deal and that Ann will be delivered in a half hour so trash ogre and witch all sneak into the zombie headquarters ogre calls out to Gollum. Golem. i'm gonna i'm just gonna say i can't read it and not say Gollum. i'm sorry uh, <laughs> and squares off against them and Golem's men surround them and they start to duel and they both are disarmed, but Golem pulls a knife out of his boot, and Ogre manages to get his arm around his back and stabs him with his own knife. And a brawl breaks out, and Hot Dog runs down Ice, who pulls a gun on him, points it at his face, and pulls the trigger. And it, it shoots a blank. Uh, I, I forgot to say, they, they gave him a, a gun earlier, and so it, it, they gave him a gun. <laughs> yeah, hammer, a hammer and a Hot Dog gave him a gun. Yeah. Uh, uh, a Luger to go with his fucking Nazi yeah. uniform. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so he tries to shoot Hot Dog. It's a, it's blanks. Doesn't do anything. But don't worry. He's got his trusty shoe knife at the ready and kicks Hot Dog in the stomach with it. Ooh. Trash Hot Dog's freeze. beanie weenies now. <laughs> so, got cut up. Trash uh, freeze Anne and they go searching for ice. But Ice attacks Trash, but he's no match for him. And Trash beats him and tosses him down a broken floor into the ground where there's uh, a bunch of spikes. And he gets impaled on the spikes. Uh, (laughs) Back at Ogre's, Anne's playing the piano. And Ogre's questioning her about uh, inheriting the Manhattan Corporation. And it's all, everyone's happy now. And there's like literally nine minutes left of the movie. And here's where it's, it's going to go off the rails. G.I. Joe cartoon. Uh, a helicopter flies in. Multiple trucks full of uh, stormtroopers roll up. And they all fl- flood into uh, Ogre's base. Hammer suits up. And he's, he's now wearing the Imperial officer uniform. Uh, dressed up like a G.I. Joe villain. And... He goes in, there's grappling hook troopers, there's horse flamethrowers, <laughs> sim- every combination of goofiness we have into the Bronx. <laughs> so they're all celebrating. Ogre brings out a cake shaped like Manhattan to celebrate their victory. They had time to bake this giant cake <laughs> and the facilities to do so. <laughs> I'm say, where are they getting the supplies to do such things? They live in a sewer. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere so, you look, it's all crumbling concrete structures, and yeah, I don't, I don't know where this, I don't know where this fully stocks this confectionery. <laughs> <laughs> so they start singing "Happy Birthday" to Anne as all the shock troopers swarm in, and Hammer gives them the. There's a big hole in the floor above them, and Hammer's standing over it, looking down the hole at all the chaos happening, and all he's doing is screaming and laughing like a maniac <laughs> with his arms out in the air, just... <laughs> that was great. What happened to this character? I have no idea. I don't know what his motivation is. I don't know what his plan is. <laughs> So he gives the order and the flamethrower horses start just torching the place. And he, he's just standing there laughing, uh, which 
uh, gets a few guys down. She uses a whip as her main weapon, but she gets gunned down and Hammer's laughing his ass off about that. Then Ogre gets shot in the back a few hundred times and he stumbles over to his throne and he collapses in it. And then the flamethrower horses come in and set him on fire. <laughs> and Hammer's just, oh, this is, he, yeah, this is just high comedy for him. He's loving it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a trooper takes aim at Trash and Anne throws herself in front of him and she gets shot. And he holds her while she's dying and she tells him to remember that when you live in the Bronx, you live with death and she fucking dies Ugh. and then <laughs> trash spots a grappling hook gun on the ground and he picks it up and he looks up at the hole at hammer who's still just looking dead at him <laughs> <laughs> fucking no trash exaggeration just, either like this is what happened <laughs> this is straight up trash aims the thing at him he's <laughs> laughing the whole time and just shoots him in the chest with a grappling hook and pulls him down the hole uh, <laughs> this was pretty lackluster too i wanted like the hook to go through his chest you know and no just just the tip of it just sticks in him uh so there's chaos everywhere but Trash has the the time to tie the grappling hook rope to his motorcycle, and he drives his motorcycle out of the sewer into the daylight, dragging Hammer's corpse behind him. The movie freezes, and the credits roll. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> At least nobody was dreaming. Uh, true. <laughs> But like, oh shit, we ran out of film. We gotta wrap this up now. That's what it feels like. It feels like literally they just ran out of money or film or something and were just like, shut it down. Just give what we have to the editor. Vic, we don't have any more money to pay you for any more days to shoot. Uh, can we, you know, just have some scenes pro bono, please? No, I I'll laugh. That's all you're getting out of me. <laughs> Fuck you. They need me on set for the Twilight Zone tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that was a shame so the, the pair of lines that I really liked um, there was one I think it was Ice said this he said he says to somebody you got your gray matter in your butt yeah <laughs> and then um, uh, Ogre has a line that's straight up some Tarantino shit that I, I loved. It was, uh, when this is over, we're going to owe each other a whole shitload of favors. <laughs> after he after gets told, like, I owe you one or whatever. <laughs> I was like, that's just a great line right there. So, there we go. Bronx Warriors. In the bag. For whatever it, it's worth. Well, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this was a fun little experiment. It was good stuff. Uh, I mean, well, it wasn't, but... <laughs> <laughs> no classics nothing i was hoping to come away with a new like a, a, a new uh diamond in the rough you know but yeah nothing that really stood out i still think i guess that uh what was it called shock shock darkness <laughs> shock and dark, whatever it was called i, I, I was, was trying still... to remember the name of that movie earlier today and i couldn't for the life of me <laughs> shock and dark <laughs> I was like, uh, we did watch four movies, right? This wasn't the third movie. <laughs> I completely forgot we hadn't even watched that fucking thing. And uh, still had some classic, some real classic stuff in it. But yeah. Well, uh, shall we get down to the business? Yeah, let's finish this up. Let's finish this out with the questions. Hmm. Can't wait. I didn't. Oh, uh, yeah. and, you win. So. <laughs> well, yeah. And actually, I was like, I was thinking, should I give Mike a sporting chance and just not take notes at all? And I didn't even take notes until over halfway through the movie. So, well, you still got me. We'll see what happens. Because there's a good chunk of the movie that I didn't see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think I only have five questions, and one of them is from the from the end. So, uh, and and like I think we established that Chase has to miss all of them, and you have to get all of them. <laughs> Yeah, to win pretty so, much. Yeah. Yeah. It's not looking good for Blake. <laughs> All right. Question one. Uh, how many cars does the ogre show up with uh, down by the waterfront? Hmm. 
stab in the dark at that one. Uh, what color was the uh, drunk guy's hat? <laughs> uh, question three, what was the number on the front of Hot Dog's truck? Oh, shit. Uh, question four, so the random third guy that went with Trash and What's-His-Face to fight the dancing gang. Super Mario? Super Mario, <laughs> sure. Uh, what motorcycle club does he belong to? <laughs> his, his rocker is visible. And, uh, let's see, question five. What is the name of the operation uh, with all the cops going in to fuck up Ogre. Oh, shit. Oh, I don't know if this is right. I'm, I, there's a good chance I'm going to goose egg this whole thing. Mm. Alright, question one. Uh, how many cars does Ogre show up with? Seven. Five. Six. Damn. Uh, what, was, what color was the drunk guy's hat? Red. Green. It was red. Oh. Uh, what was the number on the front of Hot Dog's truck? 73. 51. 31. Uh. Uh, what motorcycle club does Super Mario belong to? <laughs> the Third Reich. <laughs> the Koopa Troopers. <laughs> the Flying Devils. Yeah. And finally, what was the name of the uh, operation? Operation Flying Devils. <laughs> was, was it Burnt Earth? It was Burnt Earth. That's uh, correct. Uh, well, that's it. Eight to four. Dun, 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 dun. At least I got, got one. I'm surprised. You did. <laughs> you did get one. Uh, we need some music or something to. <laughs> it's kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what are you gonna do? Maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll put some in. Put some music in. I'll put some music in there. Put the music that was playing during the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So that's that's it. That's the end of our Mezzadella Spazzatura Italiano. We'll probably never do it again. Uh, <laughs> but as we end with something, we have to start something anew. And that's Garbage Theater Season 7. Oh my mm. god. That's, ri that's ridiculous. Season 7. Season 7. I'm doing this a while, chaps. Yep. Yep. So, it's been worth it, though. Yeah. So I'm going to start us out right this season. So, uh, I, I, you know, I'm happy that I got the sort of Van Damocles back and, you know, I could, you know, fire a Van Damme movie down the chamber whenever I want to. <laughs> but at John, at John, yeah. <laughs> and, and there's a particular one that I've been wanting to do, but I'm in the same boat I was in with Replicant where I'm terrified it's going to disappear. So I'm going to pull a, a classy Blake move, and I'm just going to pick a Van Damme movie for my regular pick anyway. There you oh. go. So we're going to be watching for episode one of season seven, the 1998 classic that no one's heard of, Knock Off. There is no substitute. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. Just wait. It's an hour and 31 minutes. Rated R. Uh, 4.9 on IMDb and a scorching 8% on Rotten Tomatoes. Nice. Uh, directed by Hark Sui, uh, a prolific uh, director oh, yeah. producer of, Ch of Chinese cinema. He did Once Upon a Time in China. Uh, starring the one, the only, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, Co-starring the one, the only, Rob Schneider. No way. Oh, no. Uh, also starring Leela Rashan and Paul Sorvino. What? 
with a budget of $35 million, and it took in a whopping worldwide gross of $10 million. Ooh, uh, shit. Five million of that was just from the opening weekend in the U.S. <laughs> and then it just trickled in another five for the rest of its run. God damn. Uh, synopsis. A fashion designer must join forces with a CIA agent to combat terrorism revolving around Hong Kong's knockoff apparel black market. <laughs> Guess who's the CIA agent and who's the fashion designer? Because it's not the obvious choice. <laughs> Oh my god, is Van Damme the fashion designer? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rob Schneider's the CIA agent? That's the twist, but I'm giving it away now. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this could be great. I, like, I'm, I'm gonna, full disclosure, I've vetted a good bit of this movie. It is phenomenal. Good. This we may, we may very well may rename the Desert Heat Award the Knockoff Award. <laughs> like, this is another one. How did I not know this existed? Or the, it could be an award. It's, it's the Desert Heat Award, but it was, it's the award's been made in China, ripping yeah. off the original <laughs> Desert Heat Award. <laughs> there you go. We got a new award, and we haven't even watched the movie yet. Uh, <laughs> So I've got some plot keywords here to give you a little idea of what we're in for. Uh, tied feet, CIA, undercover, exploding boat, exploding building, rogue agent, machismo, uh, kickboxing, punched in the face, two-man army, rickshaw, acid, and decapitation. Okay. That's what I like to hear. A uh, little bit of trivia. Sammo Hung was the film's second unit director and directed the majority of the fight scenes. Oh my god. That's promising. Un unfortunately, uh -oh. the, scene, the film's fight scenes were heavily edited for release, and less than half of what was actually shot made it onto the screen. You're gonna fuck with... Yeah, I know. Like, one of the <laughs> best <laughs> action choreographers... What are you talking about? It makes me wonder if this was another Desert Heat scenario where Van Damme got his hands on it and said, uh, I think I can do it better. Like, <laughs> that's the type of situation where it like doesn't even matter if there's a language barrier. You just do what the fucker told you to do. That's it. Yep. <laughs> so, like, you're going to be uh, fine. Just let him handle it. Yep. Uh, <sighs> I'm talking about Van Damme, not Sam. <laughs> not <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, another little tidbit, uh, the role of Inspector Han in the movie was originally supposed to be Jet Li, but he backed out at the last minute because he got the role in Lethal Weapon 4. Okay. Uh, and, they the replaced him with, <laughs> and they replaced him with Rob Schneider? No. Oh. This is a complete... Okay, this Inspector Han character, th this is like that, that Chinese cop that's in every... Um, uh, Godfrey Ho movie where okay. it seems like he's in a totally different movie and never shares the the, the same screen with uh, the main actor right. it's kind of that situation wonderful yeah I mean I'm getting real like this is some kind of joint production like mm -hmm. Soy Hark was huge like he made yeah. tons of movies in China it, um, it's it's 100% dubbed so it was a, definitely a Chinese production okay like a joint thing. Uh, and my last little trivia thing is Jean-Claude Van Damme and Leela Rashan, who is also in this, both made their big screen debut in the same movie in uncredited roles in Breakin'. Hmm. <laughs> well, there you go. Hey, all right. Interesting. Uh, I was actually going to bring up Breakin' during the movie, but you came up with a better punchline. Whenever you said that it looked like Pee-wee's Playhouse, I was going to say it looked like <laughs> Turbo's uh, Shack in Breakin' yeah. 2. Yeah. Also accurate. Yeah. Uh, reviews. I'm going to give you three reviews of people that loved it and three reviews of people that did not love it. Uh, first, the loved it. An accidental classic. Pure <laughs> genius. An avant-garde Hong Kong action. Uh, now, the ones that didn't like it. Worst Van Damme movie ever. More, <laughs> li more like ripped off. <laughs> and unintelligible. I like how clever that guy that that wrote more like ripped off thought he was. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's already called knockoff. It means right. the same thing. What? <laughs> it, fellas. Stupid, more like yeah. dumb. That guy, that guy went to sleep with a big old <laughs> smile on his face and a big old hard penis in his pants. <laughs> he really showed him that time. He was telling his wife about it and everything. Yep. Uh, you you fellows are in for a treat. If if you ever wanted to see a high stakes rickshaw, rickshaw chase scene where the shoes are blown off of Van Damme because he's just that fast <laughs> in dynamic action shots of shoes exploding. That, mm. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> all right. This movie has it all. And that's all I got to say about that. It's on, uh, I think it's on multiple places. I'm pretty sure it's on uh, Prime and also Tubi. It's probably on YouTube as well. So pick your poison. Knock off. It's going to be good. I mean, uh, you know what? You actually got me excited about it. Yeah. And you should be. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't lead you astray with a Van Damme movie. Well, you've done it with several, but... <laughs> There were a couple in there. <laughs> Desert Heat. Replicant wasn't too bad. What? <laughs> <laughs> I swear. This is, is going to be it. Be right. good one. Can't wait. Can't wait. All right. So that's that. Bronx Warriors done. Italian Garbage Month done. Season 7 on the horizon. And we will be watching Knock Off. Any last words? Any last preamble? Postamble? No. Uh, I don't have to defend myself for any of my beliefs tonight. <laughs> uh, I've only been playing the same game over and over, so... Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I've got no kind of ambles either. Nothing. Neither do I. Let's just... That's for the best. I'm let's just end tired. on a classy note. <laughs> for once. And thank you for listening. It's been a wild ride so far into season seven. And we're going to keep thank on going. Thank you for listening to Garbage Theater. As always, you can find us online so we'll see you next time, folks. Facebook.com slash Garbage Theater, <laughs> on Twitter at Garbage underscore Theater, and on Instagram at Garbage underscore Theater. If you'd care to leave us a review on iTunes, we would very much appreciate it. And if you have a movie suggestion or just want to reach out to us, you can contact us at any of our social channels or email us directly at Garbage Theater Podcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all the latest episodes and happenings. Good night, and see you next time, folks.